Now, until relatively recently, the kind of transparency I've just referred to would have been unthinkable. Not many people in this room perhaps don't remember the error I'm going to describe, but others do. Even if the state of New York had been willing, in effect, to share its checkbook register with anyone who asked to see it, you'd need your own multi-million dollar mainframe to read the computer tapes and a team of programmers to reformat them first for you. Or, in the alternative, if you couldn't afford that, you'd need a warehouse in which to store the piles and piles of continuous feed Z-fold computer paper on which they would print out what you asked for. Then you'd need years to leaf through the pages and see if you could spot what you were looking for. But the power of the internet and desktop computer technology now found in most households and virtually every public library has effectively eliminated the excuse for governments to maintain any wall between citizens and detailed information on the spending of their tax dollars. Around the country, elected officials of every political stripe are beginning to tear down these walls. A major breakthrough in this area came last year when President Bush signed the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act. Sponsored by the Republican Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma and Democratic Senator Barack Obama of Illinois, the law creates a Google-like search engine and a database tracking some $1 trillion in federal grants, contracts, earmarks, and loans. The website is up and running. It's federalspending.gov. That's federalspending.gov. You can go there and noodle around in it. You can search for spending by area. You can search for spending by congressional district. You can search for a particular vendor. It's quite neat. This is only $1 trillion is only a part, albeit a very large part, of the federal budget. And it excludes individual payments, people like Social Security recipients, obviously. The, the interesting thing is the, 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 uh, the government did this in a smart, cost-efficient way because for just a few hundred thousand dollars, they actually bought the software to program the site from a nonprofit group known as OMB Watch, which had developed it and had developed its own good version of such a website. So this is a model for the type of thing that can be done. Inspired by the Coburn-Obama bill, and in some cases anticipating it, we see a growing number of states going further. There's about a dozen states in which there are executive orders or legislation pending that would uh, bring about the type of thing I've just been describing. And uh, in addition, I think the states of Alaska, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, and Minnesota, actually Minnesota's mm -hmm. still legislation, so scratch that, have done the most to share information on state expenditures and contracts over the internet. For clarity and ease of use, my favorites are Missouri and Kansas. And uh, you may want to take note of their addresses in case you want to check this out. Kansas is www.kansas.gov forward slash CanView. That's CanView starting with a K. Missouri is, <coughs> skip the W's, mapyourtaxes.mo.gov. Missouri is really nifty. They have the whole state payroll on. And you can look at it three different ways and see who's there and what they make or what they made last week. Now, in New York, of course, the most significant step forward for transparency has been Attorney General Cuomo's Project Sunlight, a searchable public database of political contributors, lobbyists, and government contractors, or government grantees, that is. When Blair Horner of the Attorney General's office spoke here last fall about Project Sunlight, he focused on the tracking of campaign contributions and lobbying expenditures. But Pro Project Sunlight also provides an informative glimpse into one small, previously dark corner of the state expenditure universe. And I'm referring to legislative member items, which are New York's version of the pork barrel expenditures known in Congress as earmarks, and which now total nearly $200 million a year. Thanks to Project Sunlight, you can search member items by reference to recipients, to sponsoring legislators, or to counties where the money's being spent. You could also easily jump to information on file with the Attorney General's office for charitable and nonprofit groups receiving state funds. Why is that useful? Well, you may or may not be shocked to hear this, but sometimes there are ties between the directors of charitable institutions and the politicians steering funds to them. Sometimes those ties can even be uncomfortably close. The disclosure of more information on federal earmarks, in fact, led to, I believe, the indictment and conviction of one congressman, if not a couple, because of such these times, kinds of close ties. And who knows about these ties better than the people who live in the community? I can sit in Albany and browse through this list forever, but I don't know if this guy is connected to that guy. But people in the community do know. And so this is valuable information to have out there. And there's good news on this. Project, Project Sunlight uh, allows you to do the type of searching I described. And this is a really significant achievement for which the Attorney General deserves a lot of credit. 
and I, among others, have given it to him. But it's just a start. The good news is that our state controller, Thomas DiNapoli, has indicated that he too is committed to sharing more financial in information with taxpayers. I know his staff is working on some version of this um, that was not specified in a speech he gave on the subject. His involvement is especially important because the controller in New York maintains the state government's accounts and pays all its bills and has to approve of all its contracts. So he sits on a treasure trove and in fact at the state level only at least, he could virtually unilaterally uh, carry out uh, the fuller disclosure that is necessary. Although ideally we'd have legislation requiring this. The goal here is not simply transparency for its own sake. Universal web-based disclosure of expenditure details can have practical added value as a deterrent to would-be ripoff artists in and out of government. Like the mid-level state bureaucrat who was charged last year with misdirecting funds to pay for a lavish lifestyle that included a fleet of vintage Corvettes. He was steering money to non-existing corporations and contractors. Now there's at least a chance, uh, there's plenty of gadflies around, that somebody would be looking at the contractors of that agency and wondering what is the XYZ Corporation? Because what happened was, I think somebody in that office finally wondered what is this company? But it hadn't been, you know, the auditor can't, they don't constantly audit in real time state agencies. They can't. Um, but you'd be more self-conscious about trying something like that if you knew it was out on display to the whole world. Um, web posting of contracts and expenditures would transform New York's taxpayers into a mass army of auditors, including hundreds of smaller platoons at the local level. In fact, at the local level, it would probably be most valuable because of the familiarity factor. It's unlikely that school officials, for example, in Roslyn, Long Island, which as you may have heard, where, you, as you may have heard, they embezzled $11 million over a period of a few years. $11 million from a single school district. They would not have been as reckless in what they did if they knew their extravagant expenditures for gas credit cards, Home Depot, travel agencies, had all been regularly exposed to local residents who are concerned about their property tax bill. There's not a school district in New York State that doesn't have three, four, or more gadfly retired public accountants sitting around with nothing better to do than to look at how they're spending money. Which is not that that's not a good thing to do. An effective Accountability and Transparency Act in New York would create a searchable internet database of all groups getting funds from state <coughs> agencies and public authorities, including the purpose of each grant and the name of the sponsoring taxpayers. Taxpayers could also download a complete list of government contracts linked to copies of the contracts themselves, including collective bargaining agreements with unions which are interesting reading in many cases as well. 